Zero Accounting Software 2023 Payment for Inventory Linked to Purchase Order or PO. Get ready because it's time to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation that being get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put our financial statement reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it right click in the duplicated tab so we can duplicate it again back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down let's open up the balance sheet. I'm going to tab to the right as that is thinking and accounting drop down. This time, let's open up the profit and loss or income statement. As that's thinking, I'll tab back to the left, change the range. So we're going to go to the drop down. Let's do a custom range, if I may, 2023. And let's go to the end of it and update it. For, so we have an up to date stuff here. We like up to date stuff. And then we'll tab to the right. And this one looks like it is already up to date, so we're good to go. We're going to go back to the first tab. Now, in a prior presentation, we thought about the purchasing cycle of our inventory starting with the purchase order. Now, we're going to make payments on the, the purchase order. So, if I look at my flowchart, this is a QuickBooks desktop flowchart, but we're just looking at this nice flow of the general forms for an accounting cycle for purchasing inventory. So, we're up here on the vendor side of things or the the outflow ultimately the purchases cycle or expenses cycle noting that inventory will have a component both on the purchasing side as well as the sales side because obviously we're going to purchase inventory and then sell the inventory so we entered our purchase order last time which would only be used if you're in a situation where you can request the inventory without actually having to pay for the inventory generally, right? So then you have a transaction which doesn't actually impact the financial statements, but is simply a request, one that needs to be tracked because we expect then that we're going to receive the inventory. So in our case, we requested guitars. We didn't pay for them. We don't have the guitars, therefore didn't record a transaction, but sent out the purchase order to Epiphone in our case. Now we're going to imagine a box shows up in our store or warehouse with a bunch of guitars in it and also a bill, a bill from the sender Epiphone for the actual guitars. So now we can take that bill and compare it to the purchase order that we had and see if everything lines up, count the guitars and everything, see if we have the inventory that's properly there. And then we could use the purchase order then to populate the bill. So that's, that's a common uh, kind of setup that we would have. We could use the purchase order to populate the bill. Uh, and then we can, we can generally use th the bill to create the actual payment to pay off uh, the, the, uh, the bill that was given to us. Now, notice that when I'm using these terms, bills and particularly bills and invoices, we have to think about them in perspective in terms of which side of the table we are on because we can use them interchangeably. So I'm going to get, for example, a bill from Epiphone, the vendor in the box of guitars. And in our case, if I enter that into the system as an accounts payable, that's what a bill means for us. It means an increase to the accounts payable. If, however, I simply paid off the bill and just wrote a check, I never enter the bill into our system then even though we got a bill we, for our accounting system, we entered it as just a payment. We just paid the bill. We never really entered a bill form into the system because the bill form increases the accounts payable. And when we send out then an invoice to the client, we can call that a bill too, right? But for our accounting software, we often think of 
the outflowing item when we're charging the client as an invoice when we're getting charged by someone else then it's a bill for the accounting software perspective all right so we can go to our drop down up top here in the business and we can track our purchase orders so let's go down to our purchase orders and see what we have here we get this nice little flow so we we're looking at the ones that are approved meaning they have been sent out these are requests for inventory now and generally the next step would say okay now i got some guitars from say epiphone we would typically uh copy that to a bill so we would copy it over and make a bill with it would be the general idea however uh you might be in a situation where you just pay it directly so you, so you could just pay it directly and then mark here that uh it has been billed so that's what i'm going to do here like in the first month and then in the second month we'll mark it off and we'll copy it over to a bill which is probably the more common kind of thing to do so if, for example if i copy this over to a bill uh mark this purchase order as fully billed and i create the draft it'll pull over all the information from the purchase order to the bill and then mark this off as having been billed and move it from the improved area to the build area the bill would then increase the accounts payable what i'm going to do instead for the first month is just open this thing up and then i'm i'm going to compare and contrast this as though we just paid off the bill when we when we received it so for example i'm going to right click on the tab up top let's duplicate it and let's say i i'm just going to pay off the bill by hitting the plus button up top and say we want to uh send spend money and note that if you have the bank feeds on and whatnot then the spend money is going through the cash account so if you, you if you have a system where you spend the money with an electronic transfer wait till it clears the bank to record it then that might be a system you can set up we'll talk more about bank feeds in a future course or section it's going to come out of the check it account and we're going to say this is going to go to epiphone so i'm going to say this is going to go to epiphone i'm imagining i have the physical bill in my hand and i'm just going to pay the bill outright at this point in time instead of entering the bill into the system and then paying it so and then we'll do the other method in the second month of operation so we're going to say this is an 01 slash 14 slash 23 and there we have it and then i'm just going to mirror the same items down here so we had an elp 20 elp so i'll say 20 or this is an elp 20 of them and then we had an ep on epr epr and we had five of those five of those and then we had an epsh an epsh and how many of those we had four of those four por favor and then epsp and then an epsp and how many of those we had five of those five of those and that gets us to our uh 13 880 is that what we had here yes so we pulled that over 13880 so now this looks very much like the purchase order however this is actually going to record something whereas the purchase order did not what's it going to record well instead of entering a bill we went right to paying for the inventory paying the actual physical bill that we got with a spend money form so this is going to decrease the checking account and the other side is going to be going to inventory for 13880 dollar amount but because we're also tracking inventory with the inventory items it will be on the sub ledger too broken out by inventory item now before i record this i'm actually going to add a couple more items uh, to it that weren't on the purchase order so we're going to say that we also are going to be putting on here direct purchases of uh an epiphone epiphone whoop, epiphone les paul again another 50 of those this is going to be tying out to my practice problem worksheet and then i'm going to add a new line so we'll add a new line and then this is going to be an 
Epiphone semi hollow body semi hollow body and that comes out to we're gonna have 10 of those and then one more new line no that's gonna be it okay sorry about that i probably should have added another purchase order to populate that other one those last two but that ties into our practice problem here so we're gonna say that comes out to the 37 uh 80 and then we're gonna say all right that's gonna actually record the transaction and I'm not gonna add another, I'll just save it and check it out first, and then we'll go in and add another possibly. So if I go on to the balance sheet and then update the big balance sheet, we're gonna see within the checking account, drilling down in on the data for the checking. We love checking out the checking. All right, so then here, there's the Epiphone money out form. If I go into it, it takes us into our money out form, just like we would expect. All right, and then we're going to go back on over to the balance sheet. The other side going to the income state or to the balance sheet as well at the inventory. So there's the inventory. Let's go into the inventory and we have our inventory populated. So we had our beginning balances and then we had our purchases. No, notice it's putting them on the books like one line item at a time, even though these are all coming from the same uh, form. So so it puts it on there, you know, by line item. But it doesn't really give me the total detail I need. And for that, we're gonna have a sub ledger when I'm trying to track my inventory and tie it out to the physical count, for example. So to see that, I'm gonna right click on the tab to the, to the right and open up another report. And let's take a look at our inventory sub ledger reports. So let's go to the, the reports on the left or you could hit the drop down and go to reports and let's type in inventory and look at our inventory item list. Checking out the inventory item list. See what we got kind of stuff we have in here. So there's our detail. We're down here on the inventory items. We have our list of, of guitars, which should have going up now. Here's the number of guitars that we have. Here's the total dollar amount, 39,976. That should match what's on the balance sheet now, the 39,976, because we're tracking it on a perpetual inventory method. So now we're gonna go back into that money out form and make one minor adjustment, making a couple of the inventory items billable, meaning we purchased them specifically for a particular customer. Now note, there's a couple ways that you might do this. For example, if I go to the purchase order in the first tab, when we made the purchase order, the request for inventory, if we did so for a particular customer, when we get the inventory, then we could use the options drop down and copy it over to the bill for our payment options, or, and we could copy it over to an invoice so that we can take the purchase order directly to an invoice and bill the customer that we purchased those pieces of inventory for. However, sometimes you might not do a purchase order or you might be in a situation where the whole purchase order wasn't for uh, for one customer, but part of it was for a customer. So you might try to use the billable items. Now, oftentimes when you think about billable items, we think about them as being used for like, uh, if you want, if you have expenses that you paid for like gasoline or supplies or something like that, that you wanna pull over uh, to billable items, but we'll test it out here with the inventory. We purchased inventory particularly for a specific customer. So first I'm gonna set up the customer. So I'm gonna go, let's go to uh, this tab to set up the customer. I'm gonna go into my uh, drop down on the contacts and we can look at all contacts and let's just make a new customer and I'm gonna call that customer uh, just, we're gonna say Eric Music. That's going to be the customer name. And so that's all I need for this example. So let's save it and close it. And then I'm going to go back into my balance sheet, drill back down on that check that we wrote or the money out form. Let's drill back down on it. So here it is. It's the Epiphone. So I'm going to go back into that one. And then I'm gonna to go to the options up top and I'm gonna edit the transaction. 
and I'm gonna imagine that a couple of these items, specifically these two were purchased for a particular customer and try to assign those customers to the item so it'll pull over to the invoice and test that out. So let's assign uh, expenses to a customer down here. And this is like the billable items to make the expenses kind of like billable. And then so they'll pull over to an invoice. So I'm gonna just say for these two items, I'm gonna try to assign that to Eric Music that we just set up. So Eric Music, we're gonna assign those two items to Eric Music. So I'm gonna say, all right, assigned, two items assigned. Let's go ahead and say, okay. So that looked good. And then let's update our form. All right, so now I'm gonna open my balance sheet back up because I messed up my balance sheet over here. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and open the balance sheet back up. And let's change the range and I'll bring the range back up to 2023 and the end of 2023. Now there's another report. I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right, right click on the tab and duplicate it just to note that you can track those billable uh, expenses that we have now. So I'm gonna to go to my reports and just show that now we have some billable items. If I wanna find those billable items, I can go to an, a billable expense outstanding uh, report and check it out. And so now we've got those uh, billable items that are pulling in uh, from the billable expense report. So now if we test this out, let's go to the, the first tab and we'll, we'll make invoices in future presentations, but just to test it out, if I hit the plus button and I was to then turn around and make an invoice, then I'm gonna say that this is gonna be going to Eric Music. If I type in Eric Music and tab, it gives me this little item down here that says two billable expenses can be added. Now, when I go into them, we have these two billable items. Now note, we have to kind of be careful here because uh, usually when we use these billable items, when we pull it in, uh, it might not be fully using the inventory items and therefore it's pulling them in with a like, like at cost as opposed to the sales price. So we'll test that more out uh, in, in future presentations when they pull those over. But again, you've got to kind of be careful uh, with those with using those billable items because uh, we have to be determining what's going to be the income accounts that will be affect, in, affected when we pull those over. And so we'll kind of uh, point that information out in a future presentation. So we'll take a look at that in more detail later. Okay, so the next thing we can just track are the purchase orders. So if I hit the drop down over here and I look at my purchase orders, now we've got the this one that we didn't automatically pull over because we didn't make a bill with it. So I'm gonna to go to the approved item and manually pull it over. Now I'm gonna hit the, the check here and we're gonna say it has been billed. So mark one purchase order as billed. So that moves it over to the build item. So let's do it again. I'm gonna do it for this one uh, now. I'm just gonna pay it straight off and I'm not gonna enter a bill for it. So again, it's kind of designed to enter the bill or pop to populate a bill to create a bill from the purchase order and then pay the bill. But we'll do that in the second month. So right now let's just open up the second purchase order and then we'll do a transaction related to it. I'm gonna pull this to the first tab. So there's our purchase order. And then on the second tab, I'll enter another check. So let's hit the drop down, and we're gonna say this is gonna be a spend money form and I'll just populate it based on that. So I'm gonna say it's from the checking account and we'll say this is gonna be for Gibson. We're paying Gibson guitars now and we'll say this is on 01-15-23 and I'm just gonna populate it from the information on uh, the purchase order. So we just had a GSB and 10 of them. So GSB and we had 10 of those, which comes out to 5,980. 5, Is that correct? 5,980 looks good. Now I'm gonna do this again, where I'm gonna add another item that wasn't on the purchase order because I wanna tie this out to my practice problem here. So I probably should have made another purchase order, but I'm gonna add this other item to it. So it's gonna be a G-I-U-S-A, uh, G-I-U-S-A, and we're gonna say three of those to bring the balance up to 
8892 and then also on that first item I'm gonna make it that billable bill do that billable thing to it just to test out the billable thing with uh, the inventory so and then you can see whether or not you would when you would want to use this kind of billable thing so assign expenses to a customer so I'm gonna say this first one we're gonna assign to a customer and it's gonna be for music I'm gonna make up a customer called music stuff store now notice it's not up allowing me to add a customer kind of on the fly or as we go here so what I'm gonna do is first go to the first tab and let's add a customer over here by going to our contacts and all contacts and I'm simply gonna hit the new customer and then we're gonna say that we want to just call this customer music stuff store it's a very generic name for this particular customer let's save it and close it and then if I go to the tab to the left, I probably have to refresh the tab. Let's see if I could just go back out of it and say this is music. There it is. It didn't even have to refresh the whole screen and it pulls it in. So we're going to say there it is. And I'm just going to say that partial part, part of this, which is going to be this one, I purchased specifically for that customer. And I'm going to turn around and make an invoice with it. Although again, it's not this bill this billable functionality thing we'll see you know what method might be the best method in future presentations so same kind of concept but we'll assign it here and say okay what's this going to do it's a spend money form it's going to decrease the checking account the other side is going to go to inventory for a dollar amount of 6892 and it's going to affect the sub ledger for inventory by unit so let's go ahead and say let's save it and check it out so if i go to the balance sheet and update the balance sheet and go into my checking account we see in the checking account we've got that amount for gibson so that looks good i'm going to go back on up and go back to my reports again the other side is going to be in inventory so here's the inventory account going into the inventory and so we have the Gibson items broken out by the, the two different items that we purchased, but we need to further break it out by the actual units of inventory for tracking on a perpetual inventory system. So that ties out to 46868, which should be also on the inventory report. If I update the inventory report, we then have our units of inventory over here and the total uh, cost 46868 which ties out to the balance sheet 46868 our billable expenses over here are if I update this report uh, we have the the epic okay so there we had I've updated it now so it's the Eric music and then we've got the music stuff store these are the items that if we create an invoice for uh, these customers we should get that pop-up saying hey look you've got these items that you could pull in to the invoice which we will follow through on in a future presentation now i'm going to make one more adjustment i'm going to imagine that that we paid actual checks so i'm going to go back on over here and add a check number to our form so i'm going to go back in to a balance sheet again balance sheet and i want to put check numbers just so it can tie out to the the mock bank reconciliation we're going to be doing in a future course or section so i just want to put check numbers in place so I'm going to say this is going to be for a custom date 2023 and update it. And then I'm going to go into those checking account and take a look at that form. And so we had these two, two that were made. So let's go into this one and see if I can edit it with a check number. So I'll go into their options edit transactions and then i'm going to put a check number of 1004 so that'll tie out to our bank rec so we're going to say check number 1004 epiphone uh no memo and then now notice if you were actually printing out the checks you would still have to buy pre-printed checks because they have the check number on it. So this would be tying out to the actual check number and then you'd put those in and print out the check. So let's go ahead and save it here. And I'm gonna say, okay. So now I'll go back up top accounting again 
balance sheet and check out the other one. The other one, just like the other one. Custom date 2023. And go into the checking. And so now we should have a reference to the check number. And so there we have that. And then I'm going to do the same for this one here. I'm going to say this one. If I go into it, let's edit it. And I'm going to say this is 1005. So pay by check. And I'm going to say update. And Gibson, this is check 1005, the next available number. So I'll save that. Looks good. So now if I look at my transactions, I have those, I have those reference numbers, which might uh, help with our bank reconciliation. Obviously these days, a lot of transactions are basically electronic instead of checks. And we'll talk more about, you know, how that plays out when we do our bank reconciliations and whatnot and in the bank feeds in a future presentation. So one more thing, we want to go to the first tab over here and let's go to our business. Let's go to our purchase orders. And then I'm just going to once again, go from approved and manually pull that purchase over, uh, purchase order over and say it was build. And so now it's pulling over to the build items. So we have received those, those are good now. All right, let's finally go to the tab to the right and let's open up then a trial balance. Actually, we'll, we'll enter one more purchase of, let's enter one more purchase of inventory. I'm going to go to the first tab again, and we're going to then say, let's, let's say we're going to say, uh, spend money, spend money. And we're going to say it's coming out of the checking account. Okay. And this is going to go to diamond head. This is who we buy our ukuleles from. So I'm going to say there's a new contact and let's say the date is on 01 slash 15 slash 23. And so, and we'll say, okay, then I will once again pay it by check here. The item is going to be a D U K for the ukuleles. And let's just say we're buying three of those. We're not going to be buying them specifically for anybody. So we're not going to assign them uh, to a customer. <clears throat> My voice just cracked. Sorry about that. So <laughs> it's the same thing. So this is going to be in decrease in the checking account, the other side going to inventory and then also to the sub ledger for the ukuleles. So let's save that and check it out. So if I go to the tab over here, we need to open the balance sheet up again because I keep messing it up. Open up the balance sheet. Keep the balance sheet open for crying out loud and then hit the drop down. We want to say this is going to be custom date for 2023 and the end of the year updated. So we should once again have a decrease to the checking account. The other side going into inventory here. So if I go into the inventory, there's our purchases for the uh, ukulele. So here it is. I had to refresh it. I'm going to go back on up again and then we can go back to our report. It's also on the inventory report. So we've updated our ukuleles on the inventory report. So that's great. Let's go and open our trial balance now and just check where we stand at this point in time. So I'm going to hit the account drop down and we want to go then to the reports and just open up the trial balance. That's the easiest form to kind of check out that we have everything the way it should be going forward as of this point in time. A lot of action going on this time. So we're going to hit the drop down. We're going to say, let's, let's do this for a custom range end of 2023. And this is where we stand. So you can uh, check your numbers. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If something's off, it might be the inventory and the checking account, for example, then you might expand the date range and see if they change. And if so, it might be a date issue, drill down on those uh, numbers and then adjust the dates.